interesting to film today. You need me to guide you off? This is a 700 Pioneer. Yeah. Good little machine. Depends on what you're doing with it. I, uh, like if I didn't realize I was going to ride it as much as I do for just riding. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good if you're on like ATV trails, but if you get out, like a lot of our trails are just dirt roads. You get out on there and it's not that I'm a speed racer, but when you ride with people with almost anything else, they want to cruise at 40, 45, and this thing is it kick it kicks out governs at 43 so even if we're riding it like 38 39 you're just rubbed out the whole time and yeah it's just not comfortable so if it did like 65 and you rode 45 it would just be a nice idle and it'd be more pleasant they get very loud especially when you put the roof the windshield on it starts echoing in there but uh so i mean i'd like to upgrade but for now it's doing good i mean i've had it for I've got 4,700 miles on it. I've had it a year and a half. And it's been pretty good, you know, nothing. I had to put an O2 sensor in it. That's about the only thing that really went wrong with it. Was that, that snorkel isn't? No, I put oh, that yeah. on because they put the intake was right under the bed, like under in front of the tire here. And I was riding on a trail and the water was just a little deep. It went up to the seat and I almost made it out of it and then it drowned it on me. So I put the snorkel on it just in case. I don't mud run, but if there's mud on a the trail, then I'm gonna go. And uh, so I put the snorkel and also what that did is with that with the intake down by the tire, up on them dirt roads, it's dusty all the time. I had to change I had to clean the air filter like constantly. By going to that, I can clean the air filter, I can do it in about half half the intervals so because it, it's sucking cleaner air up there obviously but yeah it's been a good machine it hauls wood out wood at. and most of the machines that I would upgrade to wouldn't fit in the bed of the truck so then I'd have to buy a trailer I mean this one barely fits in it as it is so what do you got there that's that's your clone holds for my clone cool. I have it I run it a little bit in the winter here and there, but I want to clean the filter out a little bit. I want to check the I want to check the uh, spark plug and just see how I'm running. I'm probably going to have to lean it out a little now because they tend to lean out in the winter. The air I'll probably have to lean it out today. I don't know, but I'm going to look at the plug and see. Uh, I'd rather run it a little rich. I'm pretty impressed. Look, there's a little bit of tiny bit of fines right there. In the throat, but it actually sealed pretty decent. There's not too awful many fines in there. And that's good. You don't want any fines in there. The filter's doing its job. Yeah, so this is a clone. Holds form a clone, and I watched our A Fleet Command guy. He he worked on them, got them to where they run pretty good. I really like his videos. But uh, Walt, he lives right here in New York, but he didn't really give it a very good review. He gave a good review of it, I guess, but he didn't really like them much. But if you if you get it and you're not afraid to just tinker with them a little bit, I've cut a serious amount of wood with this. You got to adjust the carburetor a lot. But and this boot split. But being a clone, you can just go to Husqvarna and buy any part and you know an upgrade. I could have bought a boot from. China for 27 cents, but I paid nine dollars for the Husqvarna boot because I figure if it breaks on it, I'll replace it with Husqvarna. But I paid 220 bucks for it, and I've caught I don't know at least a couple hundred cord, I would say probably. Yeah, and that's so Walt recommended this, and I really like it. It's Oregon VersaCut. It's a lightweight bar. It's, it's steel and uh, with an aluminum core. And the way they glue it in there, and you can see I kind of pinched the bar up on trees a couple times. And, but uh, it, it lightens the saw up some, and 
holds up pretty good. And I got the Oregon LGX chain. That seems to hold an edge good. And so those are the bars and chains I chose. I, I got the Chinese bar with this, but then I got a little aggressive with the rakers because I tried that steel two-in-one -one sharpener. But I don't know if I pushed too hard on it or what. I think it took my rakers down a little too far and I was bore cutting. And when you bore cutting your rakers are a little aggressive, it wants to kick back and I ended up blowing the, blowing the tip out of the Chinese bar. But if I think the bar would have lasted pretty good if if I didn't do that. <laughs> this spark plug, it was the only one they had that would go in the saw at tractor supply. She's a little bit lean. See how it's just a touch white? Yeah. You want it like that brownish oh. color. Well, let me get it. Do the, bring it up to the camera. Hold it right so, about here. So that white, it's uh, just a touch on the lean side. You see the where it gets kind of brown back here? That's more of the color. You want a nice tan color is what you really want. Trevor used a rancher like mine, a 460 rancher like mine for years and years. I had it for 11 years before it quit running. I got to get into it. I'm pretty sure it just needs fuel line, um, maybe a carb kit. It'll idle. You start it up, it'll sit there and idle beautiful, but as soon as you try to give it gas, it just dies right out. So I'm going to, I bought on eBay and I don't even know eBay or, or Amazon want it. I got a little package of the little push bulbs for it. Check, check valves. It's not really a primer. You can pump them all day. It won't flood the machine, the saw out. It just, it just flows new fresh gas into there. And uh, so that's on mine too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can't valve. flood that. You can't flood it by pushing the primer. You can push that 20, 100 times, whatever you want. And what it does is like if it's really hot out, like some of the saws people talk about, oh, it starts hard when it's hot. Well, with that little valve, ball valve there, you can, you can pump that until. You know, and get nice cool gas back up in there, and it sometimes helps them start. And you know, pump it eight, ten times. Oh, but they go bad. But like I said, eleven years of just flawless running and, and cutting way more than that saw is designed oh, to cut. Man. I mean, at the time, I don't know how many times we cut for Matt, me, Matt, Tracy, me, our friend Ben, and Matt. He was burning. 60 plus cord a year. I was doing at least 20. Fa uh, face cord is what we face do. Face cord, right, not full cord. I was cutting, I was burning about 14, cutting 14 for me a year. And then Ben, probably 30 cord, anyways, face cord. And now, granted, I didn't cut all of it with that because other, you know, Tracy was cutting in there, Matt was cutting in there, what have you, but uh, did lot. that for years and years and years. Well over 100 cord a year went through that saw. And after 11 years, like I said, it just it won't. I can't give it gas, and I'm pretty sure it's just Carb just you know rubber get uh, the rubber lines and stuff. And now in, in my saws and stuff, I run nothing but ethanol free, it's a high octane that because ethanol is just hard on rubber. Any small engine, you know, don't run anything ethanol in it. I run ethanol in this, the Pioneer, just because it's fuel injected and it says right in it that it can run it they, you know it's kind of like a car so it has more but i will like if i'm going to put it up over the winter i will fill it up with ethanol free just to because it does last long <laughs>
Which way? better than that, man. Maybe a ratchet strap? No. That's quite a bit of wood there. I'm just afraid of smashing this off that does split it off. But if it does, it'll be a good reason to get a new saw. You wanna get you wanna use mine? 
No. Get the stop ladder. I'm gonna try to drop that one first. I'm afraid it's gonna split off.
There she goes. I don't see anything else that would endanger that. And yeah, I, can... I think we're out of time. Yeah, we are. Woo! Brothers, you're awesome. Wow. I want to take this opportunity to thank my brother Trevor for all the help he does. I could have dropped those trees, but chances are I would have probably landed them in the garden through the garden fence. He has been doing this type of work, working in the woods, well, all his life. We started out when we were young. Uh, I was like seven years old, and our stepfather was a logger, and Trevor grew up in that and took it to the next level uh, while I went off into the Army and, and such. Uh, Trevor was logging with Dad, and, man, I just appreciate him. I appreciate his talents and everything. He has done for me. You, you're not going to find a better man. You're definitely not going to find a better brother than Trevor. Check out the links below and the videos that and playlists that I suggest here. Subscribe over here. Guys, it's free. Make sure you click on the notifications so that you know that as soon as our new content comes out. Hey, this is THAM141. Say hey. Be safe out there. Have a great day. God bless.